all of us Christians, by virtue of our baptism, have been entrusted with a precious treasure, a precious gift, the gift of our Catholic faith. It's an amazing gift. And within this gift of our faith, we have been given knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven to one degree or the other. We've been entrusted with a message of salvation, the salvation of the world, to one degree or another. And it's true that not all of us receive, or at least the faith does not manifest the same fruit in all of us. For some of us, it ends up becoming a fruit that we are called to say priesthood. Some of us are called to consecrated religious life. Some of us are called to be husbands and wives, to be mothers and fathers. Some of us are called to be sons and daughters. But in each of these areas, you and I are invited to receive this gift of our faith, to live our faith, to cultivate our faith, to foster our faith, to share our faith, to make use of our faith. In other words, in each and every vocation or station in life, we're called to be faithful to whatever it is that God has given to us to live in receiving this amazing gift known as our faith. Well, my brothers and sisters, this is precisely what we are hearing in this gospel today, in this parable of the talents. In the gospel today, we hear that there's this man, a rich man, who decides to go on a journey. And this man is obviously Jesus, who goes on a journey. He suffers, dies, rises, and then he ascends into heaven. And he goes away for a long time, and then he will come back on the last day at the second coming, at his glorious return. But prior to him ascending and going away, what does he do? He calls his servants, and then he entrusts his possessions, it's his stuff, that he entrusts to certain servants. And he distributes these beautiful gifts of his, what belongs to him, to these servants based on their ability. So not everybody gets exactly the same thing. And as you can see clearly there, that's what happens to us as Christian disciples. The Lord distributes to each and every one of us this gift of our faith, this gift of our Catholic faith, and it manifests itself to different degrees. And there's no fault in having five talents or having one talent. It doesn't matter. What matters is whatever it is that the Lord has given us, we are faithful in the way we use that which the Lord has given us because after all, it belongs to him. In the gospel today, we learn that to one, he gives five talents. To another, he gives two talents. And then to a third one, he gives one talent. Now, if you recall, a talent was a monetary unit that was used in the ancient world. It was a huge monetary unit. One talent represented half a lifetime's wages. So even the guy who received one talent did not receive an insignificant sum. That's a pretty significant sum, half a lifetime's wages. But in any case, one was given five based on the ability. One was given two, one was given one talent. And then it says, after the man had gone on the journey, immediately, right away, without wasting any time, the one who received five talents immediately traded with those five talents and he gained five more. He bore fruit. The one who gained two talents, same thing. Immediately, he went on to trade with those two talents and he gained two more. And then the one who received one talent, and I'm not sure why, was he jealous that he received one and others five? It doesn't really say, but he alludes in his excuses that he gives that he was afraid or something like that, but he doesn't do anything with it. He goes, he digs a hole, and then he buries the talent. And then, after a long time, the master returns and wants to settle debts with his servants. The one who had five talents basically goes forward and he says, look, Lord, you gave me five talents. I've gained five more. And the master says these words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, wow, small matters. Five talents is small matters for this master. It's amazing because five talents is an exorbitant amount of money. That's five half a lifetime's worth of wages. Amazing. Since you are faithful in small matters, I'll give you great responsibilities. Come, share your, your master's joy. In other words, you're now equal to me. 
share my joy. And he gets, he gets his reward. Same thing with the one who receives two talents. Lord, see, you gave me two talents. I cultivated them, I traded them, and now I've gained two more. And the master says the same thing. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I'll give you great responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. And then the one who had one talent, he buried his talent. He comes up to the master and is full of excuses, full of excuses. Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter, like making up this whole narrative. So out of fear, I was afraid. I went off and buried the talent to the ground. Here you go, there it is, take it back. And the master basically says, you wicked and lazy servant. Huh, what's wrong with you? So you thought I was mean and evil? Could you not at least have put my money in the bank so it would have at least gained interest? And so at the end of all this, this wicked servant is basically told, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has five and take this useless servant and throw him out to the outer darkness where there is wailing and grinding of teeth. Can you see that? My brothers and sisters, this is what happens to us when we don't make use of the good of our faith. We're being invited, I think, in this gospel today in a very real way. No matter what your state in life, no matter what your station in life is, no matter what your vocation is, in whatever it is that your state in life is, be faithful to your Catholic faith. Be faithful to that which God has given you. Live your faith. Cultivate your faith. Learn your faith. Share your faith. Make use of it. If you do that, you will be fruitful. Not all of us are necessarily big in the faith. Not all of us have big platforms and can preach to the whole world. Not all of us are called to be popes or St. Francis of Assisi of the world or Therese Lesseuse of the world. But in whatever capacity the Lord has blessed you with the Catholic faith, be faithful there. It may seem small to you, but it's not insignificant. If you're faithful in that which the Lord is inviting you to be faithful to, you will bear fruit. And the fruit is necessary to present to the Master at our judgment day when we do our exit interview. But here's the thing. The fruit actually blesses us in this life too. The fruit actually blesses us in this life. If we are being faithful to our vocations as Catholics, as Christians, it blesses everybody. If we're living the faith, sharing our faith, learning our faith, fostering our faith, it blesses everybody. Think about it. Imagine if every Catholic was truly faithful to their Catholic faith, no matter what their state in life. Imagine how awesome the world would be if priests were actually priests, not crazy priests being unfaithful. And I speak about priests because this week we heard that McCarrick report and we saw a lot of infidelity from men who are meant to be people who communicate the faith of Jesus Christ, bishops, cardinals, priests. If priests were actually priests who are faithful to what they've been given, imagine how awesome that would be for the whole world and for the whole church if we truly believed our faith, lived our faith, cultivated our faith, shared our faith with fidelity the church would be a much better place. If only bishops were truly bishops the way God intended it to be, it would be awesome. If husbands and wives were truly husbands and wives the way God intended it to be, wow, we would be in, a, in an awesome world. If Catholics were actually truly Catholics, not burying their faith and acting as if it doesn't exist, letting it accumulate dust. But unfortunately, that's what we do and that's what we see in the world today and it doesn't bear fruit. It doesn't bear fruit. And if we don't continue to bear fruit, we'll be cast out into the outer darkness when the day of judgment comes. And furthermore, we deny the good fruit of our living out this beautiful gift of the faith to the rest of the world. And it's such a sad state of affairs, right? And so don't be like this one talent servant who buries his faith. Those who bury their faith are those who say, I'm Catholic, but I'm Catholic, but I don't really live the Catholic faith. I don't really go to Mass. I don't really pray. I don't really pay attention to the church's teachings. I'm Catholic, but you bury your faith. I'm Catholic, but 
I don't really share my faith. And I'm not asking you to go around being one of those guys who says, are you saved, brother? Are you saved? You know, that, that guy who makes everybody uncomfortable. You know, that's weird. I'm not saying be that guy. But I'm saying share your faith with joy. Live your faith. Have a Catholic conscience. Think with a Catholic mind, even as you act in the world, right? Vote with a Catholic conscience. I'm a Catholic, but I don't vote with a Catholic conscience. I'm a Catholic, but I don't act in a Catholic sort of way because I think the master is fearful and the faith is just imposing all this stuff on me and God is this mean guy who just tells me all these things and I have to suffer under the weight of the Catholic faith. <sighs> sad, sad. I'm a Catholic, but so I bury my faith and it doesn't bear fruit. It doesn't bear fruit and therefore I don't live my faith the way I'm supposed to be. And what a mess, and what a sad state of affairs, because everybody suffers. And I'm not just talking about lay people, I'm talking all the way down from clergy, the whole church. When we don't live our faith, it's a mess. It's a mess. And we're seeing it all over the church, and all over our culture, and all over our country, right? The invitation today, fidelity, fidelity. You and I are being invited to be faithful in whatever it is that we're being asked to do. I really do believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that it can actually be refreshing and empowering to recognize and realize that each and every one of us have been given a vocation. We have been called to be faithful, and we can actually be faithful in whatever capacity that is. In the small little section of my life that I'm called to live my faith, and act in a way that is in accord with what Christ is calling me to be, I can actually do that, and it bears fruit. It can be empowering to think about that, especially in light of the crazy world that we live in, especially in light of, as I just said, the infidelity that we have seen, even in the ranks of the church, with cardinals and bishops and priests who are unfaithful, even in light of the fact that the, the country is a mess, instability, the culture of death weighing down on us, people who don't live out their faith, it can be really refreshing and empowering to recognize that, yes, even though there are others out there who are not being faithful to their Catholic calling that Christ has given them, I am going to be faithful. I can at least be faithful. And it may be very small, it may be one talent, but I'll be faithful at that one little talent that I've been given. I can love my, my sons and daughters, I can love my husband or my wife, I can do my vocation with fidelity, and I have confidence that if I do that faithfully, it bears fruit. I may not even see the fruit necessarily, and the fruit may not be some big, you know, glory that I'll get from the world telling me, oh, look at you, you got a platform, awesome. But it's a fruit that will last for eternity, and it blesses the church, and it blesses those around us, and it makes the world a better place. And there's, there's an empoweringness there. So I encourage you, be faithful. Be faithful Catholics. I can be a faithful priest, a more faithful priest. I'm called to serve St. Timothy's Catholic Church and be an associate pastor. I can do that with more fidelity. I can do that with more intentionality. I can live out my faith all the more each day. I ask the Lord every day. I can certainly do that. And it's true, there are others out there who are not faithful, but I can at least strive to be faithful myself. If I do that, then I know the Lord blesses all my efforts, my meager efforts, and they bear fruit. I may not even see the extent of the fruit, I may not even understand the extent of the fruit, but they bear fruit and make the world a better place. And at the end of the day, when we stand before the Lord, we can at least say, Lord, I was faithful with what you have given me. And the Lord will say those beautiful words that we heard said to those faithful servants. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's reward. Praise be Jesus Christ.